On September 1, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland from the West. Two days later, France and Britain declared war on Germany and World War II was underway. The United States wouldn't officially join the war until December 8, 1941, the day after Pearl Harbor. But for some North Carolina towns, their role in the war had been years in the making, and to help, they had to cease to exist. Fox 8's Michael Hennessy joins us now. Michael, it could be called the dam that won the war. Neil, Katie, we're talking about Fontana Dam. It's out here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's near the North Carolina-Tennessee border, and it formed Fontana Lake itself. The waters that make up the lake sit atop towns which were once home to thousands of people. People who worked on the dam, some of them went on to work at the Oak Ridge site, which is up there in Tennessee. It was one of the three original sites in the Manhattan Project, and none of them had any idea what was being built there. Some settlements stand today because they're seniors were washed away. The biggest sacred project that has ever been pulled off probably since the Trojan horse. Others are afloat due to a penance paid by those predecessors. These people really should be honored very highly for what they did. Judy Carpenter's home is situated in Almond, North Carolina. But it was first assembled as the Panther Creek Church in a nearby town called Japan. The mountain people called it Japan, so if you hear me say Japan, I'm just using the mountain language. Japan was a sliver of a score of settlements. We lost our cultural heritage whenever the Fontana Dam was built. Legion, now legend, once nestled in a sub-range of the Appalachians. The Great Smoky Mountains. It was just like any town like outside of Boston City or, or Silva or anywhere else. Most of them worked on farms and grew up on the farm. And then they worked at anything they could, mostly the woodwork. Helen Vance lived in the largest of those towns, dubbed Proctor, running along the Little Tennessee River. Five different generations lived on that farm. But while the waterway was a player in what the peaks and valleys provided to the people, the reliance on the natural resources has always been a driving force in all of southern Appalachia. Two major corporations were wrangling over more appreciable ambitions. You're going to get something out of this that nobody else has. The Aluminum Company of America, Alcoa today, and the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, both wanted to build dams along the artery. The negotiations had been going on for a year or more between TVA and Alcoa. The state of North Carolina was abreast of Alcoa's plans to build two dams and the two bodies of water the barriers would bring. So a new highway, 288, was carved into the mountainside, meaning people's properties wouldn't be cut off. Yesterday. But on December 7th, 1941, the entirety of America a date which will live was pushed down a perilous path. In infamy. I think at the time we had like the 18th uh, top military in the world. 2,300 American troops were killed when 360 Japanese aircraft attacked Pearl Harbor. One of our teachers was L.N. Hickerson, and he had been in World War I. And so the next day, when we went on Monday to school, he told the boys in my class, he said, every one of you boys will be in service before this is over. And within three weeks, TVA and Alcoa cut a deal. Alcoa ceded all their lands for the project to TVA. TVA's intentions were elevated. TVA came in with a plan to build the highest dam east of the Mississippi River, 480 feet high. The ensuing single lake would either flood all of the towns within the valley or strand it. Even though TVA had uh, the money to build a replacement highway for 288, during the war, the steel for the bridges, the labor that it would take to build that road, it was deemed that that was not available. Uh, it was more important to the war effort. And it became exceedingly evident Fontana Dam was essential. My dad worked for, for Fontana Dam, TVA, for the whole time they were building it. He's, they started it right away, 
and he worked at several different jobs. In less than three years, 5,000 workers and their families flocked to a village called Fontana and finished the dam bearing the same name. Well, less than three weeks later, we had to move. 68,000 acres along the Little Tennessee would be bought out through eminent domain at an average compensation of $37 an acre. A number of the people that lived there were allowed to take their building with them, and a lot of them did. Dad decided we'd take our lumber with us. And so he and I tore, tore the dismantle the whole thing. And we'd, he had put a big, large 10-penny nail up in the roof of the, the very top of the house, and took a big rope and tied it around my waist. So if I fell, I'd, I'd be caught have something to catch to. The water started rising over the Evictee's properties in November of 44. Japan was wiped off the face of the earth, and they were talking about the Japan, North Carolina. The dam was producing electricity shortly after Christmas and barely removed from the following 4th of July. The families forced to abandon their estates first learned the significance of their sacrifice. It made you wonder if they knew ahead of time just how big of a statement that was going to be. While the purpose of the dam was to create electricity, the vast majority of Americans had no idea of the true power that electricity was helping to create. We'll talk about the sacrifices those local people made both at home and abroad back here tomorrow night at 10. Neil.